Hello, guys. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Ezra. Hi, hi Cindy. Hi, Chongxun. Hi, Yuli. Hi, Selena. Uh, girls, I want to apologize about my voice. Uh, it's a little bit hoarse, but I haven't been able to speak since Monday. I think today is slightly better. I'm going to try to speak as clear as I can so you understand me. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. It's only one, two, three, five students. We're still missing some of you. Anyway, uh, today and the next week is the last class of this level. Okay, so two more classes. Now, my intention today is for us to finish Unit 12 so we can get it out of the way. And then next week, we're just going to have a little bit of revision to see if there's something that you really struggle with, something that you didn't understand. Uh, but so far, I think you did quite well, if I'm being honest with you. So I know I gave you the homework, which was unit uh, 11. You were supposed to do the vocabulary and grammar review. Have you done the homework? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm going to turn off my camera a little bit because it says my connection is unstable. Let's see if it gets back to normal. Okay, so let's start with checking out our homework first so we can continue with the rest of the um, lesson. Okay, so unit 11. <clears throat> Okay, let's start with the first exercise, please. Who should we ask? Ezra, do you have the homework? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Can you please read uh, first exercise, all of it? Uh, the, the first exercise? Yes, please. Okay. Um, uh, when it... My partner and I live in an old house on the coast when it was built in the 19th century. Um, it was over 500 meters from the sea, but now the water seems to be getting closer all the time. The sea level is rising every year and the waves are washing away the beach. Sometimes when there is a storm, the water reaches the house. Last February, for instance, the ground floor was completely flooded by seawater and a small building near our house disappeared overnight. Unless something is done immediately, we know that our home will be next. Some other houses along the coast were saved when a strong wall was put up in front of them and we want the same here. Okay, I'm just going very slowly so I can under my, underline the correct answers. So we said no over here. Okay, and then the 11th one was were saved. And then was put up. Okay, cool. Very well. Girls, make sure you're having this as correct answers. Let's go to exercise three, because if I move the page over here, we won't be able to see all of the sentences. So the next one is exercise three. Cindy, do you have number three, please? I'm sorry, teacher, I haven't done yet, but I can try. Okay, yes, of course. A few years after I finished my secondary education at Kennel Street Secondary, I received an invitation to return there. Invitation is correct, yes. It was a celebration organized by the school for ex-pupils following the... Okay, celebration is also correct. Good. the com completion of several new See? completion okay. completion yes when i arrived i was very impressed the new gym was a great 
improvement on the O1. Very well, improvement is correct. Where we use to talk all our examination. Okay, improve examination. We're just gonna go with plural. Examinations. The okay. Okay, the development of some yep. land next to the school also means it now has far more classroom. Perfect. My only disappointment was the was that none of my old classmate was there, but I still enjoy my day back at school. Good one. So we got disappointment. Excellent. Okay, cool. Okay, let's go to exercise uh, four now. Chongshen, do you have four? No. No? Uh, Yuling, do you have number four? No. No? Who has number four? Nobody has it. Okay, I'll tell you the answers then. Okay, so number one, you got team. I'm just gonna write the words over here, okay? Team. Then number six, the appearance of an area um, of land will be a landscape. Then the next one, a yellow and black flying insect. Three letters. B, a bird which cannot fly and lives in a cold place. Penguin. Now we're going down. The noun of the verb, explore. Exploration. A very high place, mountain. Um, the noun of the verb move, movement. The noun of the verb discuss, discussion. And the last one is a bear. Okay, so please make sure you're writing down the answers. And we're having one more exercise to do, which is number two, but just I'm gonna give you a second. can check out uh, exercise two as well. Okay, so let's go with the last part so we can finish that. Let's clear it. Okay, so who has exercise two? Ezra, yes, let's read it. Um. You should get up early. 
the ice cream melted quicker as soon as the temperature increased. Quicker or more quickly, not quicker, more quickly. Okay, let's write it down. So, more quickly. Okay, number three. Of all the people at the meeting, Lauren spoke better. She made a great speech. Oh, but she's one, so you're not comp you're not comparing her. So it will be the best. Spoke the best or just best. Okay, how about next one? Um, buses stop here more frequently now, every ten more? minutes. Yeah, that's good. More frequently. Okay, number five. We must try more harder to find solutions to environment. Just harder. Just harder. Next. Uh, they're all bad musicians in the band, and the guitarist plays the worst of all. The worst, that's a good one. All right, next. It began to rain heavily when the storm approached. It's really more heavily. More heavily because you're making an adverb. You're, you're making the sentences as uh, like you're placing an adjective, but you're actually putting the adverb. So more, we're going to say here more heavily. How about the last one? Uh, if we all use energy more carefully, we can reduce the amount of pollution we cause. And that is good. More carefully. That one is a good one. Okay, girls, please make sure you're having these answers. Okay, cool. Let's clear this up. Uh, let me just double check which page we're going back to. 109. Okay, cool. 109. Nine. Okay. Reported speech. So first, I'm going to take you to the to page 138 when talking about report reported speech so what's the difference when we have direct speech and reported speech direct speech is when i say it because it's directly i say it to you but if you're getting the information from someone else then it's going to be reported speech it's actually very simple very plain let's take a look at some of the examples it could be tricky when you need to change the verb. But because this is the first time you're going to use direct speech, should be very easy because it's the easiest. Okay, let's take a look. When we have present simple, the sentence changes into past simple. I go to university in the city center. Now, we don't have I. Now we have she said she went university in the city center so what you need to focus on is the verb the main verb in the sentence however guys it's very important to practice this present simple into past simple present continuous into past continuous present perfect into past perfect okay a sentence from past simple needs to go in past perfect a sentence from will in the future would change into would can will change into could um 
I know, like, if you see them like this, you're thinking, wow, that's going to be a lot. It comes with practice, okay? Don't worry about it. it. It comes with practice. So let's read the sentences again. Again, I apologize about my voice. I go with my pencil. I go to university in the city center. Go becomes went. She said. So I, I think some of you would like to use that over here. She said that. No need for it, okay? Literally no need for it. She said she went to university in the city center. I'm waiting for a bus. Present continuous becomes past continuous. He said he was waiting for a bus. Present perfect becomes past perfect. I have already had lunch. He said he had already had lunch. Past simple goes into past perfect. I enjoyed my dinner. She said she had enjoyed her dinner. So will in the future will become would. I'll call you later. She said she would call me later. And the last one can becomes could. I can speak four languages. She said she could speak four languages. So to make it sure that you're using the correct option, I think this is a good idea for you to write it down in a piece of paper or in your notebook. And just remind yourself how you can create reported speech because it's important for you to understand which grammar tense changes into which one. Okay, so I'm going to give you back over here because this is the next thing you're going to have to do. Now, for your reference, you can keep page 138 open and just try to do these sentences. Let's take a look. Actually, you know what I want you to do the first thing? <clears throat> the first thing you can do is this one. So use the, the slide, the slide, the page 138, and see which grammar tense changes how. Present simple goes into past simple. Present continuous, what did we say? Past continuous. You can complete this exercise first because that one will be helpful for you when you're going to do exercise one. Okay? And then we're going to check out the answer. Once you're ready, just give me thumbs up because I'm going to mute myself because I hardly breathe. So I really don't want you to hear how, I, how I'm a deep breather today. Okay, let's start then. So what did we say? Last year, we organized a street party to collect money. Adam said that they, Ezra? Mm, that they organized a street party to collect money the year before. Okay, so which grammar test did you use here? The sentence is in past tense. How do we change past simple? To past continuous. Uh, no. It's a perfect tense, but which one? Ezra, did you use the this one? Past simple? How does it change? Past perfect. But you didn't say the sentence in past perfect. So Adam said that they had mm -hmm. organized a street party. So because you're having past simple, it changes into past perfect. That's fine. Uh, Chongshen, you're next. Adam said they 
could organize a similar event again. Bravo, very well. Alan said they could organize organize um okay organize can go with uh, uh s and z depends which uh english do you prefer american english or uh, british english up to you okay so could organize a similar event again as we said when we have the sentence can in active uh, sorry in direct speech in indirect speech will be uh could excellent thank you Serena, is your microphone working? You link? <clears throat> I don't say they didn't have to. Really, I cannot hear you. Can you speak louder, please? And don't say they didn't have to hold it outside. Perfect, very well. Adam said they didn't have to hold it outside. So we're having present simple goes into past simple. Okay, very well. Cindy, next one for you, number four. John said he had thought about organizing a football match. Perfect. Which grammar tenses you have here? Mm. Past perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, had thought about organizing a football, football match. Okay, cool. So we said when we have present perfect, it goes into past perfect. Okay, the next one. Um, Chongshun, back to you. John said in his sister's town, groups of friends were going to play against each other. We're going to play very well. We're going to play against each other. Very well, good job. So we are having present continuous into past continuous. Conti, oh my goodness, continuous. Okay, cool. Ezra, number six for you, please. Nina said they were using their phones. Then. They were, Nina said they were all using their mobile. We just want to use all the words that we have. Mobile phone. Then, okay, cool. And the last one, you link. Nina said they would hold some traditional events instead. Perfect, would hold. It's easy, right? Once you know from which grammar tense, how do you change it? So ideally for you, as I said, ideally for you, I mean, as long as you know Oh, Serena, that's okay, sweetie. You see, I hardly speak as well, so that's fine if you're sick. No worries. So, guys, important for you to know how do we change it? Which grammar, cha which grammar tense changes into what? Once you know that, you won't have any problems. However, it, you must know how do we form each grammar tense, right? Because if you don't know how do we form past perfect, what's the benefit of it, right? So it's not really going to help you okay cool let's get going uh clearing this up let's go to our next exercise okay how about this one how are we going to change them today that day last year
How are we going to change last year into reported speech? The Who year knows? before. The year before, very well. The year before. <clears throat> the year before. How about my? He's on. Bravo, very well. <laughs> He's or her. His slash hers, because it, it's actually possession. Okay, how about we? Hey. Hey, excellent. Good job. How about right now? Then, then. Bravo, excellent. Easy peasy, right? Okay, cool. Let's take a look at exercise six. As I said, guys, today, I just really want us to finish unit 12. It's all about pretty much reported speech. There's a little bit of writing, I think, and some speaking. Uh, so next week, because it's the last class, I want you to just go through the material and just see, well, I don't understand this. Obviously, we can explain it. However, those of you who will continue to the next level, you're not going to have any pauses, any breaks. Let me just double check. Yeah, so the week after, you're starting with the next course. I promise you the next course is much more interesting, but also very challenging. And because so far, well, I, I'm having two other groups which are FTE level, and obviously I'm learning from them what they need to change. I have a couple of things that we're gonna start implementing with you as of the first class, just to make it easy for you to, to improve it. And trust me, once you master FCE, you would never have any issues with English whatsoever, even though it's just level B2, even though, okay? Because after that, you're having an advanced level, right? Uh, but that's like way far away from us. So once you master the level B2, super easy is to go to level C1 and potentially become C2 level, which means you're going to be fluent in English and you can talk pretty much about anything you want. Um, but what makes me happy is that those of you who are going to take the exam, which is end of November, beginning of December, with this level, but you're going to challenge yourself with FCE, it's going to be so easy for you to, to, to get higher marks. I mean, I'm 100% I'm sure each one of you is going to pass this level. However, now we are aiming for the higher, uh, higher marks. <clears throat> Pardon. So because you're gonna challenge to something that it's something you've never actually learned. It's gonna be a lot of vocabulary, a lot of grammar. And as I said, how you change from one level to another is the vocabulary, not necessarily the grammar. It is the idioms you use. It is the vocabulary you use, the structure of the sentence. But if you know a lot of words, it's easy for you to make a sentence. If you don't know any words, how are you gonna make a sentence? You're gonna make it super simple. So that's what, is a good idea you know because after the 25th which is your last class with PET obviously those of you who will continue with FCE as I said you're starting the week after and I know it goes like once after another you don't really have a week off that's but that's what it is it's for me for me as well can you imagine I work from Monday to Saturday I don't have a day off I literally don't have it's just Sunday but what can I do first on Sundays so I understand how you feel but trust me, I'm in the work position, but I like it. Okay, enough, enough talking from me with my horrible voice. I apologize. Next exercise is exercise six. It says, decide what to say in situation one to three. Complete the sentences. So let's take a look at the first one. <clears throat> Mark says, I can't play tennis. I've hurt my arm. Later, you see him playing basketball. You said you couldn't play tennis because you had hurt your arm. Pay attention. In the main sentence, I had hurt. We're having perfect tense, right? But then we need to change again into perfect tense, but different kind of perfect tense. Let me give you a couple of minutes so you can do exercise. Sentence two and sentence three, and we're going to check them out. Go 
Uh, let me know when you're ready, please. <coughs> Okay, Chongshan, tell us, tell us number two, please. It said someone had left their phone in the kitchen at the party. Okay, perfect. So Ruth said someone had left their phone at the party. Let's write it down. So we're having a, a an option over here. Ruth said, remember, you can say that, but you don't have to, okay? So we're going to put that like this because you can say it, but I would personally, I'm using it, okay? I'm using it, but I'm not saying that's ideal. And, and I think it comes with habit because I feel like people that I speak with, they're actually using it and I'm kind of copycat <laughs> so whatever i hear i just accept it easily so that that's a bad thing that is a bad thing i can tell you so avoid that's probably will be my advice for you before you're going to go on your examination or let's say if you have a test at school like speaking test or something like that make sure the day before avoid speaking in english talking in english with someone who has poor english Someone who makes a lot of mistakes because you're going to pick them up easily. Rather than that, before you do a test, a speaking test, before you do the examination, go on YouTube, find something Cambridge English. so You can hear properly how they speak because your brain kind of adjusts easily towards that. And you know what? When I speak with lower level students, much, much lower than you, okay, you're not low level, you're level B1. But let's say when I speak with level A1, can believe how easy it is to pick up some uh, some of the sentences they make and after that of course i'm making a mistake because my brain easily adjusts same thing like if, when i go to my um to a different country and you know previously i've mentioned to you that i speak a couple of languages so when i go over there i just that immediately my shift my brain shift from one language to another and they're like how did you do that but it's just the environment okay so it comes with practice, but it's the environment. So as I said, Ruth said that. Can you use it? Yes, you can. Should you use it? No, not really. Don't have to. It's not wrong, but it looks more posh, I would say, if you're not using it. So Ruth said someone, someone had left, uh, someone had left, their phone in the kitchen at the party at the party and you're done okay let's take a look at exercise exercise sentence three you link he was having a great time over there. Perfect, good. My brother said he was having a great time there. And that's it. Easy peasy. Okay, let's clear it. Let's go to the next one. Now we're having reported commands. Reported commands. So look at the first one. Be quiet. Helen told them to be quiet. Then we have the next one. Close the door, Paul. Helen told Paul what? Ezra. Helen told Paul to close the door. To close the door. Very well. I'm going to write it down. To close the door. Amazing. Okay, next one. 
uh, Sydney. Helen told them to think about the suggestion. Suggestion, very well, super easy. To think about the suggestion. Okay, Chongshen. Helen told them not to forget the meeting. Not to forget, excellent. And that's it. Those are the reported commands. Super easy. Super easy. Okay. How much time we have until the break? We have like 15 minutes. Okay. All right. Let's get into practice. I just want to double check how many pages we have left. Give me a second. We have quite a bit. We might even not going to be able to finish it today, but let's see. Actually, we will. Uh, quite simple, quite easy. Okay, now let's see the commands on exercise nine. Keep in touch. Lisa's family told her. Let me give you one minute to do so. Yeah, let me give you one minute so we can check it out together. Okay, let's see. This is easy. Let's start with uh, Cindy. I'll start with you. Lisa's family told her to keep in touch. To keep in touch, to stay in touch, to keep in touch. Very well. Good job. Number two, uh, Yulik. We told the brother to not be late. To not be late, not sweetie. Not to be late. Not to be late. Be careful with this one, girls. Not to be late. So I know sometimes, most of the time, it comes like very natural to say she told her brother to be late, not. I've heard people say that, okay? But it's not grammatically correct. And since we're learning Cambridge English, and this is the best English, obviously, the best grammar rules and so on. We're going to go with, she told her brother not to be late. Okay, next one, uh, Chongshen. Dave told his friend not to bring more pizza. Not to bring more pizza, very well. And we're having one more. Uh, Ezra? Charlie's mom told him not to forget to download season three for her. Excellent. Not to forget to download season three. Easy, right? So reported speech is actually one of the easiest thing when it comes to grammar in English. I personally love grammar because, and I know a lot of students are kind of afraid. It makes me happy that my voice is going back to kind of normalish, still not normal, but yesterday, I don't understand, and I'm, I'm just saying this to you guys. Yesterday, my voice was so bad, like literally, I couldn't speak, like I was trying so hard. I feel sorry for the students yesterday. I honestly feel sorry for them. But I was asking them, can you understand me? They say, yes, teacher, we can. And I'm thinking, yeah, not really. But today my voice is going slightly back to normal, which makes me happy. However, as I said before, I love teaching grammar because teaching grammar is the easiest. For me, as a teacher and as a person that speaks a couple of languages, vocabulary is hardest and the most important thing. My suggestion for you would be, this is not just for Cambridge, okay? Yeah, you're going to pass the exam. That's all good. That's fine. How you can improve your vocabulary for further on in life? Don't, yes, it's important for you to pass this uh, examination. I'm okay with that. I understand that. That's the goal. That's why you're here. But how can you make it even better? work on your vocabulary grammar as grammar is super easy you know what you're going to have a conversation with someone uh most likely you're going to use past simple potentially past continuous and present tenses eventually future plans with will or shall going to right but you already know that because it's very simple perfect tenses are not something that we use especially when speaking i would say maybe like 20 percent maybe even 15 percent 
of your overall speaking practice you're going to have in your whole life, you're going to use perfect tenses. Reported speech, yes, here and there. When you, I want to say, gossip someone, right? You're talking with someone and you say, you know what she said to me? This and this and this, right? But it doesn't mean that you're going to use it all the time. Now, if you're a gossip type of person, I suggest you practice the reported speech as much as you can. So you can copycat, <laughs> copycat, I love that. Uh, yesterday, I was having a class with someone and the student couldn't repeat certain words. And I said, you know what, do you know, the, uh, the quote said, monkey sees, monkey do. And they laughed at me. They were like, what is that monkey? But they're like lower level kids. And I said, that's actually very popular. And I've seen that in a lot of movies. What's the goal over here? Monkey see, monkey do. So whatever I'm saying, this is not for your level, but I just want to uh, try to make a story, funny story. This is for lower levels. When you see someone that is doing something, if you copy them, what they do, you're going to learn it. This is how monkeys have been trained. Of course, not in the zoo. No one has time to train them even though I'm against zoos because they're keeping the animals there closed and they cannot be in the wild as they should be. But that's a different topic. Uh, so how they test it, if the monkey has a brain that can learn something, that can potentially articulate, say something, is by this. Monkey see, monkey do. If a monkey sees that I'm doing my nails now, for example, the monkey will want to do the same thing. So once you start copying things, Let's say this is also a good practice for pronunciation. So you can see my English is very neutral because I teach online and I have students that they want to practice, uh, let's say, British English or American English. But I'm trying to keep it in the middle. Why is that? Let's say you're from Malaysia, but I have different students from different countries. They don't necessarily understand British English, right? They don't understand that. It's hard for them. I have another student that uh, they don't understand American as much because they prefer the English one. So I need to keep my English as neutral as possible. Yes, sometimes, sometimes it goes slightly British, sometimes it goes slightly American, but I don't, I don't personally mind that. Obviously, when I go out in the city, I speak as I do, and that's pretty much it. Now, for you, if you are, let's say, a big fan of American English, that's fine. How you can practice your American pronunciation. For example, Ezra, she has very American pronunciation. The rest of you, you're kind of neutral, I would say. Pretty much neutral like me. But Ezra has very American pronunciation. So let's say she wants to improve her pronunciation even better, right? What she can do is uh, she can watch some American TV shows. Obviously, maybe watch something from New York, Los Angeles not Texas, because Texas is a little bit difficult accent, so it's, it's all gonna sound nice. Uh, and let's say there is certain words, you're gonna start practicing. Whatever they say, you repeat. And this is where that quote came, monkey see, monkey do, right? You're copying, copycat. I had that yesterday, copycat, so I've been using it all day today, don't know why. So this is the easiest way for you to improve your pronunciation, okay? Um, Let's say in a couple of years, you want to move to England or America or Australia. People will notice that you are not from there by your accent. That's fine, okay? We're not actually judging people what kind of accent they have because that is something that I would say everyone can work. I know I have a colleague, they disagree with me. They say it's impossible, but I think it's possible. If you are devoting enough time and you're copying words, there is an app, I think I told you at the beginning of the year, Elsa, that you can put it on your phone. Uh, Elsa Speak, it's a very American pronunciation. This is for those of you who prefer American pronunciation. However, we know that Kim Cambridge English is from England, from Cambridge. <laughs> so we prefer to teach you in a little bit more neutral, slightly going to, Cam to British English. But again, don't feel uh, threatened by your accent, okay? Because it comes with practice. If you are, another example, and I promise we'll keep it quiet. Uh, another example that I wanna say, or another tip, if you're just coming here for two hours and you're listening to me with my neutral accent, 
most likely you will feel comfortable with my accent because you know we just come two hours in a week we don't necessarily watch i don't know some tv shows or listening to podcasts with a different accent then you're going to notice okay you're going to notice the difference you're going to say okay so she speaks a little bit of neutral when i watch my favorite tv show suits for example uh they speak a little bit more american then you're going to recognize where they come from Again, as I said, this is if you come only, uh, if you study English only for two hours a week. If you uh, study, study English on a regular basis, maybe by study, I mean watching a TV show in English. But how are you gonna watch that? You need to focus your listening. So you're going to listen, not hear, right? When we watch TV, we want to listen what they're saying. Whatever they're saying, what I like to do is, I like to have the subtitles underneath and read them. Why is that? Previously, I said organize. Could be with S, could be with Z, right? It depends. If you prefer American English, if you prefer uh, British English. Now, on my computer, obviously, I have my laptop from the UK, so everything is in British English. But for me, it was a little bit challenging, I would say, at first. So I replaced everything with an American English. And when I was start typing, and usually I don't see what I'm typing because I've been using my computer for so long, and I'm just looking at the screen, whatever I'm typing is just keep changing over there until I realize that I have put my computer into American, right? And then the typing or the Google that I opened, uh, the Google Drive link, it was in British English. So it was correcting me and I was like, why is this correcting me? Like, why am I making, what am I writing or typing wrong? So be careful to like very simple tricks like that probably. That will help you a lot. Anyway, let's see. We have three minutes until I give you a break. Um, there's so many things I want to tell you and I don't know where to, to start and, and continue it. Okay, uh, let's do this one as well. So we can finish it and after that we're going to do a listening task and we're going to go to the reported questions that should be easy also i'm thinking but i don't think you've done it have you actually st uh, learned at school reported speech i want to see your faces in the camera have you studied before yes or no 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 you haven't okay i think you're doing quite well for the first time uh, having a contact with a reported speech because as I said reported speech is one of the easiest thing in English grammar one of the easiest I promise you that conditional is a little bit tricky conditionals can be a little bit tricky but reported speech is so easy once you know the sentence in which grammar tense is the sentence how you're going to change it okay let's do this one I know I speak too much I think I'm happy because my voice is back that's why I, I speak today a lot um app competition it says design an app and win fantastic prizes you're missing a couple of words over here uh should i give you an example maybe okay let's see the first one let me give you one example You should apply online before. What are you going to put over here? You need to put a date, right? Before, let's say, 1st of June. That's the first one for me. Before the 1st of June. Now, can you try and see if you can complete from 2 till 6? But I, I will give you um, a little help. Let's say for number two, you need to search for a noun. And over here is also a noun. Number three is also a noun. Could be a name of a book, for example. The prize for the winner the final is, again, it's a noun. Food and drink will be provided by its own. You can also use a noun here as well. Oh, you have nouns everywhere. Number six will be also a noun. See what you can 
what you can combine over there. Do you have your answers? Okay, so now I'm gonna uh, put on an audio, which is about this app, uh, about this task, pardon. And yes, the answers will be different because I wanted to see how you're gonna manage to put this. Now, when you're going to listen, just put a, um, a line, doesn't matter, next to it. Write the answer that you're going to hear from the audio and just compare. Are you like getting closer to uh, what they were saying over there? Did you maybe take a guess? Let me play it for you. Unit 12, listening, part three, exercise four. For each question, write the correct answer in the gap. Write one or two words, or a number, or a date, or a time. Let me tell you about an app design competition which will take place in Lisbon, Portugal from the 6th to the 7th of June. All you need to do is fill in an online form by the 1st of June. If your application is accepted, you should hear from us before the 4th of June. On the day, you can take part alone or join one of the teams. You'll need to choose one of the challenges from a list of four and create an app which solves a problem. Last year's challenges were connected to the environment. For example, one of the challenge winners created an app which finds the nearest recycling bin for the rubbish you want to throw away. All I can say about this year is that the challenges have something to do with communication. The rest is a secret. The competition judge is blogger Fran Madison. That's M A D D I S O N. She presents the apps program on Channel 7. Her latest book, Apps Are Me, will be on sale soon. There are some amazing prizes. There's 1,000 euros and a tablet for the best app for each challenge. The four winners will then compete in the final for the first prize, which is an unbelievable trip to California. You won't be able to bring your own food into the event, but reasonably priced refreshments will be available. You'll be able to hire headphones and chargers. You mustn't forget your laptop, but you'll be able to hire headphones and chargers there. And finally, if you can't make the conference centre in Lisbon in June, consider the Grand Hotel in Prague in October. There'll be more information about this event on our website at the end of August. Now, any questions? Did you manage to hear what kind of words they were missing? And you know what? This is just a random. I have no idea that they're going to say the 1st of June. That was just random that I said. So that was good. How about number two? Cindy. The subject of this year's challenge is communication. Communication. Very well. Uh, Ezra, number three. The judge is Fran Madison, author of Apps Are Me. Good, very well. Um, new link, number four, please. The prize for the winner of the final is a trip to California. Trip to California, very well. Uh, Junction. Food and drinks will be provided, but bring your own computer. Computer, laptop, very well. And the last one, um, Cindy, back to you again. Yeah, I, I didn't get the answer. But that's okay. Yuling, do you have this one? The next competition will be held in Prague at the Grand Hotel. Grand Hotel, very well. Okay, I know it took more than um, time than it should be for your break. I'm going to give you a break now. So I want you to have a break. Um, go to the toilet, get some water. I need to also take my tea because I think my voice is 
slightly going to go away again. And once we are back, we're going to continue with reported questions. As I said, I just want to finish this page and a little bit of speaking potentially. I'm not forcing it, obviously. If we have time, that's fine. If we don't, we're just going to leave it for next week. But I think we're going to have time. So use your break, come back, and we will continue. Okay, girls, let's get back. All right, so next exercise is on page 110. We're having the reported question. So uh, you're going to hear this basically. You're just going to hear it and then you have to write down the question. It's super easy. Uh, and after that, we're going to hear the, sen the sentence, the audio one more time for the following second exercise. Super easy. Let's try it. Unit 12, Grammar, Exercise 1. I'm sure some of you have got questions about this unusual event. Yes, you in the front. Can you say your name first, please? Hi, I'm Emily. Can I choose the members of my team? Good question. And yes, you can choose up to three other people to join your team. However, each person will need to make a separate application. Who's next? Yes? Hi, Catherine. My name's Peter, and I've got a question. Do we need to pay anything to take part? Another great question. Yes, there's a fee of five euros per person. This is to show us that you're really interested in the event. Anyone else? Yes, you over there in the red and white t-shirt. Uh, I'm Connor. This all sounds brilliant. How do we register for the competition? It's easy. As I said before, you can do it all online. Log in to our website and fill in the application form. I think you're next. Hi, Catherine. I'm Samir. What do we do if we have technical problems? Interesting point. If you have problems with applying for the event, please get in touch with us. If you have problems on the day, our team will be available. However, it is up to you to make sure that your laptop is working well before the day of the event. Any more questions? Yes, you over there in the blue hat. Hi, I'm Charlotte. What are the prizes? <laughs> Full details of the prizes are on our website. Okay, so we're going to hear it one more time. Uh, this time, you also need to focus on exercise two, where you need to put the, the name. So we had the first one from Emily. There was a guy, Peter, and I forgot the rest of them. So exercise one and exercise two at the same time now. Unit 12, grammar, exercise one. I'm sure some of you have got questions about this unusual event. Yes, you in the front. Can you say your name first, please? Hi, I'm Emily. Can I choose the members of my team? Good question. And yes, you can choose up to three other people to join your team. However, each person will need to make a separate application. Who's next? Yes? Hi, Catherine. My name's Peter, and I've got a question. Do we need to pay anything to take part? Another great question. Yes, there's a fee of five euros per person. This is to show us that you're really interested in the event. Anyone else? Yes, you over there in the red and white t-shirt. Uh, I'm Connor. This all sounds brilliant. How do we register for the competition? It's easy. As I said before, you can do it all online. Log in to our website and fill in the application form. I think you're next. Hi, Catherine. I'm Samir. What do we do if we have technical problems? Interesting point. If you have problems with applying for the event, please get in touch with us. If you have problems on the day, our team will be available. 
However, it is up to you to make sure that your laptop is working well before the day of the event. Any more questions? Yes, you over there in the blue hat. Hi, I'm Charlotte. What are the prizes? <laughs> Full details of the prizes are on our website. Okay, let's start. Zhongchen, let's start with you. Question number two. What was the question? Do we need to pay anything to take part? Do we need to pay anything to take part? Very well. And who said that? Peter. Good. Do we need to pay anything to take part? Awesome. And we said Peter asked. Okay, cool. Next one is for um, Ezra. How do we register for the competition? Excellent. Who said that? Connor. Register for the competition. Okay, cool. And you said Connor. Let's write it down. Connor. Connor goes with double head. Okay, next one is for Cindy. Cindy, what was the third question? What do we do when we have technical problems? Good. Who said that? Samir. Samir. Okay. So what do we do if we have technical problems? Okay. And we had Samir. Cool, and let's go with the last one. You link number five, please. What are the prizes? Who said that? Charlotte. Why is this? <clears throat> okay, what are the prizes? And we had the girl, Charlotte, at the end. Oh, I'm typing it, it doesn't come off. Why is that? Charlotte. Okay, great. Let's take a look at how has been uh, this uh, created this sentence. Emily asked if she could choose a member of her team. Peter asked if they needed to pay anything to take part, and so on. Super easy. Now, that being said, can we take a look at the rules? In reported speech, the normal question order stays the same or changes? I vote for changes. How about B? Ezra. Um. The tense, does it stay the same or it changes? I think it stays the same. Are you sure? Look at your exercise, what you've done. Exercise two, compare exercise one and exercise two. Are they in the, in the same grammar tense? Um, no. No, so it changes. Good. Uh, Chongxin? We never use an auxiliary verb. Good. Auxiliary verb. Very well. You link. We use if, if there is or isn't a question word. Yes. Isn't. Isn't. And the last one, Cindy? We use a question mark at the end. Do we use? Do 
we use or we don't? We use. We use. Okay. All right. Excellent. Good. Okay, so this is a winning app. Now, my question for you is, do you actually use any apps on your phone? Ezra, do you use any apps on your phone? Ezra? Chongshen, do you use any apps on your phone? Do you have any apps? Like what? Any kind of apps on your phone. Doesn't matter what kind. Could be an app for social media, could be an app for making pictures. Yes. What kind of apps do you have on your phone? A lot like social media. Uh, okay. Edit the apps for edit the video. Okay. For study. And which one do you use? Which one do you use the most? I think it's study and social media. Study and social media. Okay. All right. Good. Cindy, how about you? Do you use any social? Sorry, social. Do you use any apps on your phone? Yes, quite a lot. Okay, which one do you use the most? Um, I would say Instagram. Instagram, okay. Why do you use Instagram? Um, I usually go out Instagram, use Instagram to search for something that is funny or uh, often post some story. Okay. Okay, cool. Perfect. Very well. Okay. Next thing that I would like to ask you is you're having the questions here. One, two, three, four, and five. And you need to make the questions in reported speech. So number one, Cindy asked Emily what the app did. I will help you with the first one. Cindy asked Emily what the app did now i'm gonna ask you the same question do we use question over here a uh, question mark or not not we're not using a question mark okay can you please do exercise uh, why i keep saying exercise sentence two three four and five This should be easy. Let's start with number two. Yulink, you go first. Mary asked her, what other things did it do? Anyone else has something different here? Hmm? 
Anyone else has something different? Okay, so Harry asked her if it did anything else. Chongshen, number three. You asked her, could he use it to share work with colleges? If he could, if he could. If he could use it to share work with his colleagues. Okay, next one for Ezra, number four. Um, where um, Diana asked her where she got the idea from. Bravo, where she got the idea from. Where she got the idea from. And the last one, Cindy. Cindy asked her what the app do her work. If, if the app. If the app do her work for her. Would do, sweetie, would do. Because you have will. Look, will changes into would. So if the app would do her work for her. Remember, for the, um, for the reported speech, so from, uh, you need to focus the grammar, this doesn't matter. If it's going to be a question or it's going to be just a sentence, okay? You need to follow because in the main question you had will. Will the app do my work for me? Lily asked if the app would do her work for her. Okay, let's take a look at the negative prefixes. So in English, you know, we have a lot of suffix and prefixes, right? And if you know the base of the of the word doesn't matter what kind of word it is usually they're adjectives right you are you can actually make a couple of other words with it so you can expand your vocabulary so we're using suffixes a lot but today we're going to have a couple of negative prefixes we're having im in or um friendly what is the opposite of friendly Unfriendly, unfriendly, uncomfortable, unbelievable, un. How about number two, Ezra? Um, sorry. Some people use the internet for more than. No, 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 sweetie. No, we're doing exercise one. Oh, um. In. Incorrect, very well. Correct, incorrect. And uh, Yuli, number three. In. Impossible, impolite, impatient. Okay, so your next task is exercise two, where you need to use uh, in, in, un to form negative. Uh, adjectives.
Okay, let's read it. Number one, we have it out of here. Number two, Sydney. Some people use the internet for more than four hours a day. Is this unhealthy? Is this unhealthy? Very well. Chongshun? How often do you get impatient when you are using new technology? Impatient, very well. Number four, uh, you link. Do you ever feel unsociable and stay at home watching films? Unsociable, Ezra? Um, do you feel, do you need to spend a lot of money on a phone or is it in, or is it in, Inexpensive. Inexpensive. Just, just as good. Okay. And the last one, uh, Cindy. Will we ever be able to communicate without speaking or writing, just thinking, or will it be impossible? Impossible. Easy, right? Super easy. Okay, let's start some talking then. Uh, you can use these questions over here. You can ask something else, anything related to apps. For example, how often do you use Instagram? What do you post? Have you ever posted this? Uh, what do you think about people posting that? Doesn't matter what kind of conversation you're gonna have. Just try to be it as friendly as you can. Practice making questions. So for one person, the challenge will be pretty much to, oops, my computer was switched off. For one person, the challenge will be maybe to make question. For other person, the challenge will be a little bit with uh, asking the questions. But I don't want you to just do what you're doing. So let it make like a conversation. You ask questions, you reply the questions, the other student asks you questions, and so on. Make it like fun and interactive. Let's choose Chongshen and uh, Cindy to start with them. Are we going to start? Yes. Um, Cindy, would you feel a bit uncomfortable when you stay with this stranger? Um, pardon? pardon? Say it again, sweetie. She couldn't hear it. Would you feel uncomfortable when you stay with stranger? Mm, it depends on what the strangers like. If it's if they are very friendly, so I think I won't be uncomfortable staying with them. But if they are very fierce, I think I will feel comfort uncomfortable. What about you? I think I'm same with you. If the if the stranger is friendly, of course I will a bit more comfortable when I get along with him or her. If it look like I'm friendly and don't want to talk more, I think I'm not going to have any communication with, with him or her. Uh, do you think it is impossible for you to travel alone? Mm, maybe, I think, because nowadays it's quite um, scary to travel alone, but also, it's a uh, experience for you that we could just work on work ourselves and enjoy the scenery ourselves when we travel alone. I think I would like to try it if I could. 
in the future. Then what do you think? Do you like travel alone or travel with friends? Um, for me, I'm still, I just 14 years old, so, I, so I'm not able to travel alone, but I would like to try it when I grow up. Uh, I also haven't tried to travel with my friends. I think in the future, I have to change to do it. If you have a chance, where do you want to go? Um, I think it's China because China is a big country as we know. So there's a lot of way that can let us to visit and take photos. How about you? I have think about it that I wanted to go to Thailand to have a uh, travel because I have two idols there and the country was I think it's very friendly the people there is very friendly and it is quite interested I'm quite interested in traveling so I think I want to go to Thailand Um, do you prefer travel alone or travel with family or friends? I prefer travel with family or friends because I have a cousin who likes to travel everywhere. She always take me with her. Then I learn a lot from her. She loves travel alone. So I get a lot of experience on information for her, from her. So when you are traveling, uh, do you prefer shopping or just take photo? Um, pardon, could you repeat? Uh, I mean, so when you are traveling, do you prefer shopping or you just like to take a photo? Mm, I'm a person who likes to sightseeing, so I prefer go for a cycle or having a sightseeing in each country. I'm not a person who like who super likes shopping because I have nothing to buy. What about you? Um, I think I'm a bit different with you. I also like shopping, but. I would not like shopping, window shopping, my like window shopping. I don't like shopping on purpose to need to buy something. Just when I see something I like, I think I will buy it if the price is affordable for me. Perfect. Let me give you a feedback. That's okay, guys. Let me give you a feedback. I think you're doing an amazing job. I told you before, I'm going to repeat myself. This group over here works amazing, honestly. I love how you're extending your answers. I love how you're making the question. I love how you feel comfortable with each other. That's super important because it doesn't mean that, okay, so Zhongshan knows Ezra and that's it. She feels comfortable only with her because I've been rotating you. I've been putting you with different students and you're feeling comfortable with them. That's amazing. This is how you're making a progress. Lovely, excellent. Let's change you. Let's take Ezra and Yuling. Same, same topic. Talk about using the phone, apps, what do you use, and so on. Um, so Yuling, what kind of apps, like social media apps, do you use often? I think the social media app I use often is Instagram. I use it often maybe because I have followed a lot of things over there. And um, there are, and there are a lot of videos to watch. How about you? 
Um, I often use it either for selfies or um, looking at some um, pictures of or to find some ideas. Um, so besides from Instagram, what else do you use? I think it's YouTube um, because I can watch a lot of videos and listen to music. Um, same, same for me. And I would also use Twitter or um, uh, or TikTok very often. Um, so, what would you do when you feel unsociable? Um, well, if I'm unsociable, I would often listen to music or write a story, a short story. How, how about you? I think I'm the same as you, but I will write a short story. I would usually be quiet and do my own things since I'm a little bit unsociable. What do you mean I'm sociable? Why are you unsociable, sweetie? Maybe I think it's a little bit hard for me to make friends. Why do you think that is the problem? What do you think you're making wrong? Because I don't talk much. You don't talk much. Why don't you talk? You don't feel comfortable? You're shy? What's the reason? I don't feel comfortable talking with people that I don't know. I think that's okay. It doesn't make you unsociable. I'm the same. If I see someone that I really, there is something like in their energy that I don't really like, I don't want to talk to them. And you can, you can honestly say like, I'm a very, how do I say this? Very, what's the term to make it easy for you to understand? Um, you can literally see on my face if there's someone that I like to talk with or I don't. But I, like, I don't hide it. My face says everything. And I know what you mean. Like, if there's someone that I really don't like, my face, my face expression will show them. But that's not a bad thing. That means that you're keeping your environment very safe, very close. And uh, you just don't want to be friends with everyone. And, and that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing because I'm like that. So I will say, obviously for me living in different countries, as you said, it's now people will say it's very hard to make friends. It's not hard to make friends. However, I don't want to be friends with everyone because I don't like their energy. I don't like their interest. I'm not interested in them. I don't find them pleasant to talk to them. It's not really unsociable. So don't worry about that. If you're shy, that's a different story. Maybe you want to be friends with someone or you're shy, but you don't seem shy to me because you were talking with your friends here in class. So that's a good thing. But if you are picky with who's going to be your friend, I'm open for it because I'm the same. I have like two, three people. You know what? Uh, in the area where I live over here, I think I've been living in this area for about six years now. I only know... Probably I know about three people. That's it. Can you imagine? That makes me unsociable. But honestly, I don't even have time to go out and hang out with people. I don't go to the gym. I go to the park by myself. I just, I'm not interested in stuff like that. Like I stay at home. I work all day. I don't have time to listen to someone else's, I don't know, life story. So that's really not unsociable. I think that's a good choice. It's a good choice to have 
small but healthy environment rather than hanging out with people who constantly complain. Uh, they always say bad things. Maybe they're using like bad language. I don't know. That's my opinion. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong, but I'm saying don't feel yourself that you are unsociable. You are sociable, but you are very picky with who you want to socialize with. And I think that's a great idea. Sorry to interrupt you. Keep going. So when you often get bored, do you go on social media or do like um, activities? I think I would prefer going on social media since I can have some, since I can watch some, ent some videos to entertain me. How about you? What will you do when you're bored? Um, I would sometimes go on social media or sleep. But when I'm going on social media, I would find some comfort videos or find some ideas for my, um, for my drawings. And um, um, what, what do you think you would do if you were outside in public if um, you're bored? Pardon? Um, if you were in public, would you go on social media or um, talk with a few people, like your family or friends? If I'm out in public, I would talk with my friends or family because I think it's very good to socialize with them rather than playing with my phone, watching videos. How about you? I would go on my phone. Well, sometimes I would go on my phone and um, go on random apps to seem to make it seem like I'm busy. And uh, <laughs> so sometimes I would talk to my friends or family, or I would stay quiet and. Um, look at my surroundings. <laughs> I like that. Making like uh, I'm busy, pretending I'm busy. I do that all the time. I just don't like to interact with certain people. It's just, I don't, I don't, I don't know. What am I going to say to them? Like small chat, like small conversation. It's really annoying for me. I just don't like it. Oh, look at the weather. It's raining today. Oh, yesterday was so hot. Like, come on. I really don't want to talk about it. So I know what you mean. I'm avoiding the same thing. Okay, guys, that was well done. Perfect. I love that. Both of you, you did an amazing job. Uh, you're not social. <laughs> you're not anti-socialized. You link, I think you're doing great. Ezra also, she's a little bit introvert. I know that from before, but she's also very good at having this communication. That's perfect. Uh, next week, I want you to, guys, well, I'm going to give you two tasks. Now, the first one is, Finish unit 12. Okay, I'm just going to make my notes. Unit 12, which page is this? 115. Okay, this is 115. Now, another thing that I want you to do is, if you remember at the beginning, I gave you like a file and you could have uh, write what you need to learn in terms of grammar, vocabulary, and so on. If you're keeping the file, I think that would be a good idea for you to, to fill it in. I don't know, maybe you've come up I know most of you finished the vocabulary list, so that's why I'm not asking you because you said previously. However, I want you to go through the units and see what is something that you really struggle with. If it's the reported speech, if it's the conditionals. So next week, as of last class with this level, we can just go through it and explain it to you, okay? That will be it. 
Now, before I let you go, I do want to ask you a couple of questions. So, I'm going to start with Chongshen. Now, Chongshen, I want to know, what do you feel about this course so far? Do you feel like you've learned something? Do you feel that, do you feel a little bit more confident? Which skills did you improve? Tell me something. How happy are you with this course this year? Because we need a feedback. Actually, I can feel the big improvement in my speaking and listening. Uh, at the beginning, I feel that when I speak with uh, the foreigner, especially teacher, I will be like become nervous and my mind was blank. I don't know what to say. What to? What do I need? Need to say, but now, uh, it it improved. The problem was not bother me, uh, much as before, and also my listening. I can so that I can more understand what the radio, especially the radio, what did they speak about. Perfect. Very well. Are you willing to continue your course? Like, are you going to the next level? Yes, of course. Good. Are you taking the exam as well? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Good. 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 Thank you. Thank you for that. I just wanted to know. Obviously. Well done. Ezra, how about you? Tell me, how do you feel about this course? It's been quite a long. It's been quite intensive. Uh, do you feel like you improved something? Which areas you improved? Which one do you think you need to improve a little bit more? Just in general, tell me your opinion about the course overall so far. I think that this course was amazing. It's a little bit hard, but uh, I think I can manage it. Um, I think I've improved my listening part and a little bit of my speaking, uh, but mostly listening because I used to um, I used to miss a lot. Um, yeah. Uh, and I need more improvement on my speaking because I usually get stuck and my brain would go blank. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Are you willing to continue your course with the next one? Um, definitely. Definitely. Okay. And also one last question. Are you planning to take the exam? Uh, should be end of November, beginning of December. Not sure about your date. Uh, yes. Yes, perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Cindy, how about you? Tell me your opinion about this overall course. Like, do you think you improved? What did you improve? What do you think you need to improve? How happy are you with the course so far? Mm, I think I have improved at every aspect, like writing, also the speaking, because I don't usually talk much of English, but seldom because my parents all talks English. And I think it's very useful for me that because few months ago I'm I'm having holiday that I have nothing to do. It enriched my day that I can learn to speak and writing. And also I'm happy to have speaking with the people I don't I didn't I mean face to face me so I think it's very fun and happy good excellent city are you planning to continue your uh, English like your English course with the next level mm, I may not be taking it because I'm I'm starting my school now so okay. I may be very busy so I can't take I think yeah, absolutely. That's fine. How about the exam? Are you going to have the exam in December? Yes, I'm taking the exam. Awesome. Thank you so much. Perfect. And Yuling, uh, Serena's microphone is not working, so I cannot really ask her, but she can text me if she wants to. Yuling, tell me about your feedback. What do you feel about the course? Did you learn something? Did you improve? What did you improve? And so on. I, I think I have improved everything. And I improved the most in speaking because 
at first I'm shy and I won't speak much and won't extend my answers. But right now I'm trying to extend my answers. Perfect, very well. I think you're actually doing quite well. So don't say that you are not socializing much. <laughs> Excellent. And sweetie, are you planning to continue the next level? Yes. Yes. Are you going to do the exam? Yes. Yeah, cool. Perfect. Perfect. Very well. Awesome job. That was something that I really want. I, I just put you in, in the front so I can see everyone's faces separately. Anyway, I think, as I said, guys, as a group, you did amazing, amazing. I, and I'm just being honest, not because you, you were just here with me. I'm not saying this to everyone. If that's for sure. You can ask the admin. I think as a group, you smashed it. At the beginning, it was a little bit slower, obviously, because you don't know each other and so on. There's a couple of students are missing. June was very talkative at the beginning, so sometimes he's going to interrupt me, for example, or someone else. But that's fine. That's because he was feeling very comfortable with us. Now, obviously, as I said, most of you, you're doing amazing, amazing job. Now, each one of you here, you are going to pass the exam. I'm 100% sure. As I said, next level will be slightly challenging, but the challenge is good because that means you're going to push yourself a little bit to get out from the comfortable. At the moment, you feel comfortable with this level. That's fine. But now, if you want to improve your language, your language skills, you need to get a little bit uncomfortable so you can push yourself to the next level. Do you maybe have any questions? No? Cool. Thank you so much. It was lovely seeing you again. Next week, as I said, is the last one from this course. And after that, well, after that, we're going to speak after that. Thank you so much for the class, girls. I'm seeing you in seven days. Enjoy your week. Bye. Bye-bye.